I was warned by okay. one of the uh, great musicians in Lesotho, one of the great musicians in Lesotho. He told me, okay, um, you guys are growing. Mm -hmm. And then when you guys grow, people are going to like your music. The way you sing is amazing. People are going to like your music. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you'll be having pride in all this and this and that, which are the things that I had. You're watching Testimonies of Hope. Witness the faith, courage, and transformation brought about by the guiding light of Jesus Christ in the lives of our students here at Pure Light Missions. From tragedy to triumph, this is Testimonies of Hope. Welcome back to Testimonies of Hope, where our first year students here at Pure Life Missions share their experiences with Jesus. Today I'm joined by Neo Dinaki, and he'll be sharing his experiences of how Jesus led him to Pure Life Missions. Neo Dinaki, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And yourself? I am well. I see you look like me. <laughs> oh. It wasn't planned, by the way. Um, it just so happened that we are wearing the same clothes. <laughs> but nevertheless, they say great minds think alike. Think alike eh? yeah, I mean. Neo, please tell me a bit about yourself. Alright, so my name is Neo Dinake, and I am 21 years of age. I grew up in an Adventist family. Yes. Oh wow, yeah, you mentioned that you grew up in an Adventist family. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is that like, growing up in an Adventist home? Uh, for me, it was very stressful and okay. boring. Now one might ask, why is it boring? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, growing up, you um, as an Adventist child, you're always expected to do a lot of things. And by a lot of things, I mean your parents teach you about God's word. They teach you about the Bible. And for me, the Bible was one of the things that was so boring for me. Hmm. So basically, they were teaching me something that was boring to me. So how could I express what was boring to me to other people? And how could I try to live according to something that's boring to me? Mm -hmm. So that that's basically it. And yeah. Also, having to do devotions every day, mm -hmm. every day, you know. There are some times when I had to, like, you know, <clears throat> stop doing my homework and go for devotion. When I come back, I don't feel like homework anymore. Go to school with a homework that's not complete. Mm -hmm. And that was just so annoying for me. Having to prepare, mm -hmm. having to prepare for, for the devotion sometimes because I also take part in the devotions. Mm -hmm. Everyone did in the family. So that was really, really annoying and boring for me. So I wasn't really into it. A lot of people that grew up in the Adventist home and an Adventist setup usually don't have a relish for spiritual things. Like they just do the normal customs of Adventism, devotions, but their heart is not really into it. In your case, what could you say was the reason why you weren't interested in the things that was taking place in the house? Um, having to do devotions every day was stressful. So the load was too much, too much for me to be able to, you know, try and even grasp what's going on already. It's already... Something that's very new to me. I mean, as the as a as the world when we were into soapies and everything. So the the Bible comes with stories, a person building an ark, and you're like, ah, these guys are uh, no. It's not really that fascinating for me. Who built an ark and rain start raining if there wasn't no rain in those days? You know, things like that. Mark of the beast. What 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 are those? You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would be more focused on especially those kind of prophecies. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mark of the Beast, the Daniel, the, you know, you know these things. So, yeah. You mentioned that there was, you know, soapies was coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you say that a lot of your spiritual relish was being quenched by the soap, soapies, movies, things that you'd be watching in your free time? Not only soapies, you know. Yeah, it would be r and I used to listen to r and a lot. It was really nice. Like I said, I'm more into music. So all the time I'd be, I have my headphones and then really into music and learn new stuff, riffs and runs. So that was more exciting to me rather than studying the Bible or having devotions with the family, mm -hmm. you know. And also, yeah, of course, Adventist families, the soapies and everything, right? So parents tend to want us to stop the soapies and then go into what? Into devotions and stuff like that. So that's not really, no, that wasn't really nice for me. Because mm -hmm. now I'm watching, now I have to stop and, you know, concentrate on the Bible. And which I don't like. I don't like the Bible already. You're asking me to stop <clears throat> what I like doing mm -hmm. and do what I don't mm -hmm. like. So mm -hmm. it was already... Uh, so are you telling me that you can't kind of balance the two? You can't really want to like the things that excites you like soapies movies music and then 
want to at the same time follow what the Bible is saying? Yeah, no, it's, it's, for me it was impossible. So I think it is, it's not possible. Mm-hmm. You really have to, um, if, let me put it this way. If you know we're having prayer time at 8, then make sure that uh, at 7, you stop with everything so that nothing is cut short to be able to transition into the, 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 Bible, the, the devotion thing because now your mind is still in the soul peace thing. Mm-hmm. Now you have to transition mm-hmm. into fully focusing on what the Bible is saying so that's not really mm-hmm. how it works out because now you're thinking of that scene of oh, yeah. the guy sh- should have shot the guy and everything. So yeah, yeah it was yeah. really, really high thing and everything. You're saying something that's very interesting because many times people want to, you know, balance out the two. You want to watch movies, listen to music, and these things are quite exciting. Yeah, very. And when it's time to stop that and get into the Bible, the Bible is not as exciting as, you know, watching a movie or, you know, listening to a song that is upbeat and exciting. So that's why many people, I believe, conclude that, you know, the Bible is boring because it doesn't bring all the exciting things and... I think with that being said, we can conclude that you can't really um, balance out the two because one is always going to have the more dominance because oh, it's yeah. definitely much more exciting. And you said that's the reason why you kind of didn't like the devotional time because it was taken away from the things that you really loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true, that is true. That is true. Tell me about your religious, I mean, your educational background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you want to do growing up? And um, Yes. Uh, yes, I, I did my uh, kindergarten, went to primary, went to high school, and ever since primary, I always wanted to be a chef. Okay. Yeah. Why so is that so? I loved cooking, and I still love cooking even now, by the way. Mm. Um, so I feel like cooking for me was more of interacting with people, and apart from that, it helped me escape from a lot of things, you know, every time I'd feel bad. Uh, my parents would try and punish me with cooking. I'm like, you're punishing me with something I love. I'm like, you know what, let me go and cook. And, you know, yeah, because we take turns at home yeah. when it comes to cooking. I would cook today, my brother, my sister, you know, everything like that. Everything like that. So for me, that if I do something wrong, let's say this week, it's just, you know, like, it's, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine with me. I want to do it. So it would, you know, just drive my mind away from schoolwork, you know, pressure and everything. So I'd, yeah, so oh, wow. cooking is what I really, really, really love. Oh, wow. nice. And what kind of a person would you be at, at church? How involved mm. were you in church programs? Yes, um, there's Pathfinder, there's Adventure, so I was involved in those. And yes, uh, Pathfinder and then Youth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Youth AY. Yeah. But what was your role that you played in, in these things? In these things, well, in Adventure, let me start in Adventure. Um, <clears throat> in Adventure, yeah, I was just a. Uh, in the in the in the um in what the do you squad. call this? Not really squad, but um yeah, I'll just march the mm-hmm. yeah, because I was still a child, you know, you know. <clears throat> and then when I moved into the Pathfinder, I was more into the vibes, you know, vibes. So I was like, you know what, I'm going for drums. Okay. So and then I was more into drums and then yeah, I was basically a drum beater. Okay. Yeah, one okay. of the best. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get to youth, what were you doing in youth? Uh I was just there. Okay. Yeah. And besides the, the children's ministries program, in ch- the church itself, what were, were you involved in any kind of... Uh... Yeah, I used to help the deacon. I was an assistant for the deacon. Okay. Yeah, and so what would your role be? I'd collect offerings, sometimes count, yeah, tithes and offerings and yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that, you know, at growing up in an Adventist home, religious things were not really um, interesting to you, mm-hmm. but it sounds like you're quite active at church. Um, how would you balance it out? You know, you're not interested in church, yet you are still partaking in church programs. How would you balance those things out? Balance going to church and... And not being interested in church things. What would you do at church? Mm Because you are quite active. What would you do? Uh, I was a singer. So what really took me to church is singing. So I just went to church because I was a singer. I had a group Mm -hmm. at church, so we... It was a group, a group formed to minister to other people through music. Okay. So that was what made me want to go to church every time because I was also one of the arrangers of the group. Okay. So during the week, I'd you know, arrange something nice and make sure that the melody is amazing, make sure like the harmony is nice, the arrangement is nice. Mm-hmm. So and then when I go present it to others, they love it and it's amazing. So it was mm. more of 
listening to the more of the sound of how we you know did things so i'd always go to church because i wanted to sing and also yeah we'd go to different churches so it was you know it was nice it's very very nice going to different churches to minister in different churches not really ministering i could say because you know yeah Mm. and all these things you're doing Mm. active in church you know going to different churches ministering in song yet your heart is not in it you don't have a personal connection with christ Mm. What is your life like then without Christ in it? Without Christ in it. Um, okay. First of all, like I said, I get where we were ministering. So I'd have my friends with me everywhere we go. My friends, the people we started the group with are my yeah. friends. And therefore, I'd always be with them everywhere. Mm-hmm. So being a singer in the Adventist church, what I used to do is that um, I, I didn't want to associate myself with people. I was always prideful let me just say i was i had a lot of pride you know i didn't want to be with people felt like i'm this celebrity you know celebrity vibes if you yeah. get what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and then it felt like a celebrity yeah, church a church imagine untouchable kid <laughs> don't speak to people yeah you just want to be cool you just want to be cool always with your own circle mm-hmm. when people come talk to you like hey. yeah you just make sure you dismiss the the uh, conversation as fast as you can mm. just you know get them away from you wow. so that's what I, I used to do <laughs> yeah and then also um <clears throat> as we were singing is that's what we do you know um so i'd i'd you know when i'm singing the like i said i'll be one of the arrangers of the group mm. so i'd always make sure that sometimes i take the best parts of the solos and everything and then when when we're there in front of people singing i'll just you know, um, when I know that there's a riff and run or something to do, I do it and then start looking at the how the ladies would react to that. Mm-hmm. And then after church, I go to the lady and, you know, try getting the girl to be mine, if you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would basically do. Um, yeah, so yeah. You mean you're telling me that you would sing in order to actually entice ladies in church. Yeah. What was motivating that kind of thinking? I I mean, it's being, uh, feeling like a celebrity, uh-huh. number one. Uh-huh. Obviously, the next step is going to ladies because uh-huh. now you don't, you're not associating yourself with anyone. So, left, like, there's plenty of room for nonsense, let me put it that way, or for doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Not nonsense, mm-hmm. but for mm-hmm. doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yes, of course, I went to ladies, and then, yeah, that's what opened, like, a room for for me going to ladies. So, as a result of not being connected with Christ, would you say that you forgot the reason as to why you were ministering in the first place? Mm-hmm. True, true, yes, I did. I, I really did. Because as a result of me forgetting Christ, as a result of me forgetting the reason why we started the group, I ended up doing it to focus on getting... Uh, ladies, doing it to get famous in the church, mm-hmm. doing it to be known as one of the best singers and all that. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Was this only your group or do, let me say, a cappella groups in churches do this? Because I've heard rumors of, you know, a cappella guys. In fact, ladies actually get to a point with like, you know what, I don't want anything to do with Seven Adventist guys especially the ones who sing mm-hmm. um you probably heard it out there that you know adventist guys are dangerous and as a result adventist guys are trash uh do you know anything about that you're, you're reminding me of a lot of things now um yeah 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 so <laughs> i was actually so you guys are the ones that make <laughs> gentle adventist guys who are looking for an innocent <laughs> sister out there you guys are the ones that are making a feel bad you could say that you could say that because um, I was warned by okay. one of the uh, great musicians in Lesotho, one of the great musicians in Lesotho, he told me, okay, um, you guys are growing. Mm-hmm. And then when you guys grow, people are going to like your music. The way you sing is amazing. People are going to like your music. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you'll be having pride and all this and this and that, which are the things that I had, mm-hmm. right? And then... Um, I actually did go into all of what he said, right? So they had gone through that at first, right? Mm-hmm. There were people who were singing before we could even we were even born. So they saw all this. So of course that has that simply shows that that has been going on 
for years now. People yeah. have been growing and all that, and then breaking girls' hearts, mm. which as a result becomes comes to women saying that Adventist men are trash and all that. Because what I would do is that I would go for a girl, and then as soon as I get bored and tired, switch, go for another girl. So do you see what that creates? And then um, it creates a girl. It starts with me personally. They start calling me, hey, this guy is this and this and that. He does. It's not a good guy and everything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I switch from another girl to another girl, now that causes hatred between girls. Because remember, I'm doing this inside the church. Mm -hmm. And Lesotho is not really a big country. Mm -hmm. It's a small country. So <laughs> as Adventists, we, like, we know most of each other. So yeah, that's what I'll do. And then girls would start hating each other because of who? Me. Mm. Using the talent that God has given me in a bad way, wrongly. Mm. So that's what I would do. So yeah, that's that what that's what resulted in making girls say that uh, uh, in, me, in me singing and using my talent in a wrong way, girls would call us, call Adventist men trash. Or sometimes um, girls are friends. I come and go for another girl. And then the girl starts hating the friend because now I've gone for the girl, not for her. Hmm. That's how things would work out. So. Sure. Um, you know, I've actually heard other people come to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm just going to start getting married outside of the church mm -hmm. because I've tried to be with, you know, the guys within the church. As council tells us, you know, that we need to marry someone of the same religion. But oftentimes people come to the conclusion that, you know what, in the church, there's no good guy. Mm. Uh, I'll just get married outside. What do you think about that? Well, what I can say, first of all, that there are a lot of good guys in the church. But because of us, a cappella singers, right? Um, yeah, that's what... Uh, because of us, a cappella singers, girls tend to say that. Now, what causes that is us, like I'm saying, all of the things, going for different girls in the church, even some whom we didn't go for. They view the situation, right? And that's that's the reason why they, they start saying, you know what? For me to be safe yet, for me to be uh, loved, to find someone who's going to love me and not play with me, I would rather go outside and get mm -hmm. someone to love me rather than to get myself and what I am looking at now. Right mm -hmm. now, I can already see the situation is already bad. So why would I want to get myself into a bad situation like this? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the What reasons. do you think... How do you think that affects girls actually when they go marry outside the church? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it affects them? No, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing because now you're going to get married to someone who doesn't even believe in Adventism. And now um, it tends to shake your faith mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, a, as, a, as a person. You're married to an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. And then now they'll start telling you about your church. Your church is this and saying that. And as a result, some of the people leave church because they feel like, yeah, no, my person is right. We're, we're, we're happy. The both of us are happy. We love each other. Therefore, there's just nothing for me inside the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the first thing they, 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 they came for inside the church is God. Yeah. Now they're forgetting about God because of who? Because of us, a cappella singers, because yeah. of us boys. Yes. Wow. Yeah, you're telling me very... Uh interesting things that yeah. was happening in there but i thank god that you know what you have now left that life um i'm just now interested to know how did you actually get to a point of now surrendering your life to christ and letting go of your past mm -hmm. so doing all this that i was doing i always knew that it was wrong it's not like i didn't know i knew it like like i said i was taught in the in 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 at home, devotions, you know, how God is always watching and everything, but it didn't click. But even the songs that I was singing to people weren't really that, the message wasn't coming to me at first. Was It didn't even start with me at first. Mm. For me, it would just be the harmonies that would be nice for me. So I would always feel guilty each and every time I did something. Because I, I would always remember the words of that, person I was talking about who told me that you want to go through this phase and then from this phase to that phase. Yeah. Now I always remember Ish, I was told that this would happen and now yeah. it's happening yeah. and now I'm I feel guilty every single time I do this and then I started I started praying to God that God you know what I, I wanna I want to start following you. I need you to be with me. Mm -hmm. I started remembering the reason why we started the group the reason was because we wanted to minister in song. Mm -hmm. And now I'm using God's talent as something. Just a distraction in the church, not mm -hmm. ministering to people. So I started, you know, 
really dwelling on the lyrics of the songs that I wrote and realizing as of it, its value, the value of the lyrics, the meaning, the message and everything. Yeah. And that started speaking to me, you know. Yeah, singing really started speaking to me and then I decided, you know what, I really want to change my life. Mm -hmm. And then I started, it, the way I sing after that was now normal. Uh, I sing expressing emotions, real emotions this time, not mm -hmm. really singing because I want, you know, ladies and all that. And then I started interacting with people. I uh, started interacting with people. I became a jolly person. People like being in my space mm -hmm. and all that. And it surprised a lot of people. Hey, yeah. what happened to this guy? He went from not wanting to talk to anyone yeah. to just yeah. speaking to everyone. That happens quite often. You know, someone, you, you, you can see someone's life clearly before they had this relationship with Christ. And when they do have a relationship with Christ, it's like this magical change that happens in their lives. What would you say happened for you in that you know transformation period what how did it happen i know i know it's very difficult to explain mm -hmm. that process um it's something that you just have to experience with your own god because it's never the same for everyone but if you could try to explain because i know many people that are watching um might actually have a similar story to you how would you say you actually got to a point of you know saying i'm surrendering to god yes you mentioned that you were you know regretting the things that you are doing mm -hmm. but you know just regretting doesn't it, it doesn't end there what would you do now to fill in that void that guilt that you started experiencing mm, i started having personal devotions my mom would have always have personal devotions but i didn't get it get why she'd always do that i mean that was extra to me mm -hmm. we pray as a family and then you, you also want to go pray i i didn't get that but mm -hmm. After wanting to really, you know, get to know more about Christ, I started having personal devotions. Yeah. And then, like I said, um, I was a chef. Yeah. So I wanted to minister to people using um, food. Okay. I wanted to, you know, yes, minister to people using food. So I needed to know its values and everything like that. So I started changing my diet as a person. So, I, yeah, basically outside there as people, as, as Adventists, when you want to you know, choose the right diet, the only thing you cut out is meat, so I stopped eating meat. Yeah, that's basically what I did. And you say that brought about a spiritual rev revival in your life? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, it didn't just end there, mm -hmm. you know, what? When, when God transforms someone's life, it doesn't just end there. Um, you started becoming much more active in, in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, please tell me, how would you now use your gift in church? Yeah, would sing... Uh, like singing all the time, I'd chorus out, even chorus and out this time around. Where whilst at that time I'll just go and sing, and then out of I'm out of church, back in when it's time to sing again. Now, just, um, listen to sermons, mm -hmm. like really listen to sermons, and they'll just really touch me. Sometimes, they would um, some of the things I did on my devotion in my devotions, the preacher would preach about them, and I'd get excited, you yeah. know, getting to understand the scriptures more, a different uh. It's one interpretation, but, you know, getting to hear different ideas as of how you can really attach the, yeah. yeah. And also, um, yeah, we started, the church started organizing organizing places where we'd go uh, at orphanages and sing. Mm -hmm. And that would be fun for me mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the new me, so that would really, really, really be fun. I started helping out other uh, groups mm -hmm. uh, and helping other, some, the tenors. I sing tenor, by the way. Okay. So I'd help them in the tenor line. Where, well, while at first I didn't want to do anything with anyone, mm -hmm. so that was just basically the new me. Yeah, mm -hmm. would you say that Christ filled in that emptiness that you were yeah. feeling inside? Yeah, he did because now I was doing what I was serving him the way I always wanted to serve him at mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that you really feel uh, you know what, when people actually make this decision to now fully surrender their lives to Christ, um, usually people begin mocking them. Yeah. And I can imagine you coming from a setup where, like you mentioned, it was just, you know, a lot of pride. You know, mm. it's, it's all about me, myself, and I. Now you are this humble kid um, that is now doing God's service from a willing heart, and you're just generally serving people. And you are nicer to people. You are no longer trying to be proud and pushing everyone away. Uh, did you get some form of uh, backlash or people started distancing themselves from you because of the new walk that you had chosen? Um, not really. People were, like I said, people now came closer to knowing me. Mm -hmm. They were really 
happy that I'm like they wouldn't say it, but I'd see it on their face. Like, okay. This guy is really happy that I'm on the right track now. Yeah, yeah but my friends would say, it, I mean, we can see that uh, you're really changing. You went from being a woman type of person to really now being a godly kind of a person. So that was really, really nice. People, was, yeah, people were almost like really happy. All, all of them were oh, really wow. happy for me. But at school, at school, yeah. at school, yeah, that's that was where people were like, hey, this guy, uh, <laughs> now he's here singing like ladies, mm. sopranos, fast tenors, what's this, man, what's this, are you gay, man? Mm. It didn't reach that point, are you gay, man, why do you sing like a girl, gay. man, why do you sing like a girl, man, I'm like, hey. So that was the toughest part for me now. People calling me gay. I'm like, hey, what is wrong with these guys? I'm just singing for the Lord. It's not that I'm gay. Just because I have a, f- a female-like voice, it's not like, you know, yeah. How did that, how did you overcome that? Did it make you not want to serve God through singing anymore? No, 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 no. I, I, at that moment, I felt emotionless. I, I came to a point, I'm like, God, why am I facing this when I have to come to you? Why is it that... Uh, now I am fully, I'm trying to give my life fully to you now. And now I'm coming across this challenge. No, no, no. So still to remember, I'm from an SD, an Adventist family. Mm-hmm. So my mom always prayed when it came to challenges and everything. So she always tell me that she, how she overcame her uh, troubles and everything like that. So I'd always reflect and look at my mom's stories and everything, and I'm like, this is no, like, this, this, this is no big deal. It's a minor thing. Mm. So what I did is just I, I, I used my friends to, to try and using the uh, the worldly songs at first. What we did is introduce the worldly songs, mm-hmm. singing them in an a cappella style first, and then presenting it to the world for people to get used to uh, to my voice and to know that I just guy in his girl like voice and everything. And then when they got used to me singing those kind of things, then we transitioned into God, God, God's God, uh, God's way of singing. Mm-hmm. And then now people knew, ah, this guy is a singer. Everywhere I'd go, people, yeah, no, yeah, no, because now they know that this guy is one of those people on Facebook who are singing and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's how I, I, I had to undergo it with God's help. Wow, we really praise God for the transformation that God has worked in your life. Uh, now, I want to bring in pure light. Mm-hmm. Uh, because now you are... This person that is now dedicated to Christ, you are now using your gifts to serve God. How did Pure Light then come in the picture? When did you first hear about Pure Light and how did you get here? All right, so like I said, I was, I'm a chef. Mm-hmm. So me wanting to serve people with food, you need to know what's on your plate. Mm-hmm. You need to know what is what on your plate plate what on your plate gives which nutrient what it does the collaboration of the plate which uh, nutrients they give and yeah you know yeah. you get what i'm trying to say right so i then started looking for institutions where they teach all this and then i i thought being a nutritionist nah nah not really mm. just yeah teaching you about everything including meat so I'm like, I need something that's more of serving people, like really, really serving people. Mm-hmm. Then I, I kept on looking, kept on looking until I got to a point where I'm like, hey, you know what, I can't find it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'll try considering the fact of being a nutritionist or, or rather continuing also with my career, chef career. Mm-hmm. And then um, one day as I was going through my phone, um, I see a link on Sibiso Chavalala's phone, on mm-hmm. status. I'm like, She's always posting godly things, this one, you know. But, um, Tibiso, yeah, the student, the student, student, yeah, student, 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 Maybe it's one of those long sermons. I am not maybe into a sermon. Oh, now. she was posting sermons, yeah. So, yeah, I'm like, I, uh, <laughs> I pass. And then the very same uh, link that was on her status, I <coughs> see it on someone else's status, yeah. I'm like, okay. Hey, just try, try going in, and then I click, shing, and then I come across her speaking, speaking as of how really how God saved her in everything, and telling us that she wanted to help, also wanted to help people through health and everything like that. I'm like, hmm, let me learn more about this place she went to to go in, and then I look and I find out, oh, no, these people really have what I really want. 
So then I started talking to her and telling her to give me all the details about the school. So that's how I got to know about Pure Light. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. It's always a blessing to listen to how these testimonies are really touching the lives of many people out there. And yeah, if you come across this testimony and are interested to come to Pure Light Missions, don't hesitate. Send us an email or just write your comment in the description below and you'll be able to be part of the Pure Light family. Um, so how did, they, how did you then get into the you know, process of applying? How was that process for you applying to come to Pure Light Missions? Hey, you know, that process for me. Ish, 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 ish. So I asked for the application form. I looked to, uh, through it through the phone. It seems like nothing. I'm like, all right, let me go print it out. I go print it out. Eh, 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 eh. That thing looked like an exam paper, man. It was this <laughs> big, an exam paper. I'm like, I've never seen such a big <laughs> application form. It's normally, you know, three pages max. Mm. And then I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I think our application form is 21 pages. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go through it, I go through it, and then while I'm going through it, before I could even write it, I'm like, let me just go through it, right? Yeah. And then I come across this policy. It's called the policy, you know? Yeah. Ish. That policy. I'm what, like, what is that policy? I <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the policy talks about relationships. Okay. Um, know that if you want to come to Pure Light, you can have a relationship. Mm. You can be having an ongoing relationship outside. Mm -hmm. Know that also when you come to Pure Light, you can't also have a relationship <laughs> going on. <laughs> so to me, I'm like, ah, come on. That's no big deal. It's just a small thing. Why are these guys making relationship issues a big deal? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, you want to go to the place, so you don't have a choice. I mean, you have to abide. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, on, uh, at the same time, um, I show my parents the application form. Hey, they don't seem interested. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm um, all in this situation alone now. Because yeah. they're like, hey, this one, hey, feel like we're in South Africa. <laughs> you know, right. You see, they're not really interested. The fact that it's also in South Africa, so... As a Sutu person, I didn't really travel much. So yeah. the fact that it was outside the country, they were already thinking, this one's not going anywhere. Yeah. He's not going to be able to make it there. And then Tebiso helps me go through the application form. I write everything down and I finish. And I finally complete the, the application uh, in form. In two weeks. Sure. Like, it took me two weeks to finish that application yeah. form. Because, yeah, there were questions there also where you had to really... You know, really right. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Our application form, by the way, is an application form that tests to see whether you are really cut out to be a pure light missions. And many people actually don't make it pass through this uh, application stage mm -hmm. because, you know, they just feel like it's a lot of ridiculous, unnecessary things. And it's actually the institution trying to see if you're able to survive, if God has really called you into this line of work. So, um, yeah, it's, it's long and personal. For, for that specific reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, true, 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 true. So one other thing is that um, as I was continuing with this application for my forgotten about school fees and everything, I mm -hmm. just went and on road to road. And then when I finished, I'm like, all right, money for school fees. What mm -hmm. are you going to do, my brother? Yeah. What are you going to do? And your parents were not Yeah, my parents, you see, like I said, so. my parents weren't e really interested. Yeah. So I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let me try looking for a sponsor. And see what I can do. So one day we're going to serve God through song. Yeah. So we're there singing, 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 singing. And then uh, I see this guy who's dressing like, yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know medical yes. missionary is there. I'm like, yeah, I see him. I know him. He's always preaching everything. I'm like, then something says, go talk to him. Mm. Go talk to him. And then I go to him and tell him. In fact, I told his wife. That, oh, okay, I want to do this and this and that, a pure light. Okay. All right, all right. No, I'll talk to my husband about it and we'll get back to you. Mm. So normally when people say that, you'll wait for about a month for yeah. them to do everything like that. And then whilst we were still there, they come to me, both of them. And then the, I thought the wife had already explained. She starts explaining in front of, of me oh. to, to the husband. So this guy is, is saying this and this and that. He wants to go to pure light, so he wants us to help him and sponsor him to go to pure light. And then the guy's like, he looks at me and he keeps quiet for a moment. I'm like, okay, all right. 
Then he says, yeah, sure, sponsor him. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay, okay. That's amazing, that's amazing. And then, excited, I'm like, right, now I need to put everything in order mm. as of how I'm really going to present my case to my parents. So I have a, a dad who's always, you know, you have to be clear when you present information to him. If it's not clear, yeah. it's not going to happen. What you're requesting is not going to happen. Yeah. So and then um, uh, we have a family meeting. I tell them, all right. First, I, I start by telling my mom, no, no. Okay, I have a sponsor, this and this and that. She, like, she, it's, when I'm telling her all this, she's not even listening to me. Mm. I'm like, ah. So I decided, you know what, let me call a family meeting. Call a family meeting and then sit them all there and then I tell them, okay, I have, uh, I'm going to Pure Light. Um, I'm done with the application form. I'm going to send the application form. Even before I could finish, my dad was already bored, man. He was already looking at me like, when are you finishing? <laughs> when are you finishing? And then he asks me, I get all this, my son. Yeah. All of this I get. I, we don't have money to pay. Yeah. Pure light is expensive. We don't yeah. have money for pure light. And then I'm like, no, no, don't worry. I have a sponsor. You have a sponsor? Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's that's really nice. That's really nice. Ah, then you can go, you can go. Mm. But the way he said you can go was still very sarcastic, you know, like it's as if it's like <laughs> this one. Yeah. yeah. And then the next thing I'm like, um, okay. If that's the case, you guys need to go and speak to my sponsors, my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not doing that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, guys. And then I start talking to my mom about it. And then she realizes, okay, this is really serious. Mm -hmm. She talks to my dad. They go speak with my sponsor and sort everything out. And then I sent my application form to Pure Light. Mm -hmm. And everything was settled. And then I had an interview. Uh, but before having an interview, there was there's a time... Um, process there, I'm like, I sent my application form like three months ago and these people responding, I, yeah. maybe it's not really God's way for me to go to Pure Light. Mm. Um, and then, just when I was feeling that way, an email comes, Kum. we received your application form, everything, everything, your interview will be on this date. Ah! I become so happy, I tell my mom about it, she's like, okay, okay. She, but she still doesn't show interest, she's still like, yeah. alright, okay. And then, Interview comes, Brother Chris interviews me. Uh, the network was pretty bad, but yeah. you know, we managed to go through all that. And then after that, it, there's a time frame where you have to wait now. Mm -hmm. Now you have to really wait to, mm -hmm. for them to process everything because there's a lot of people who are being interviewed. It's not just only me. Yeah. So now I wait and then Brother Chris calls again. He says, Neo, um, we'll give you a response on Wednesday. Mm. Okay. I'm waiting, waiting for my response. On Wednesday, he doesn't call. Ah, so maybe they've decided that I'm not going there. They'll just send an email. Ah, I go to camp, come back, still nothing. Yes. And then, just when I, a week before... Um, You're supposed to come. Yeah, a week before I was supposed to come. I didn't know that I wasn't, I was, I was supposed to come, but I just knew that Tepiso, uh, school, schools were open at that time. Mm -hmm. I get... A phone call and says, all right, Nebo, um, please make sure you make it on campus this Sunday. I'm like, is this person for you? Like, this Sunday. Mm. And then I became very excited and everything. And then I tell my mom, okay, this Sunday I have to go. She's like, okay, so this is real. You're really going there? I'm like, yeah, I'm really going there. And now comes another problem. Mm. I look at my wardrobe. I'm like... <laughs> What was going on in your <laughs> My clothes were my were you know clothes were like uh, drip clothes you know cargo. What what is drip? <laughs> Someone <laughs> might not know what is drip out there. What is drip? Cargo pants that are torn with dragon shirts. You know mm. shirts that are written a lot of things, man. You know shorts. Yeah. Shorts and all that. I'm like I. When I read the policy, you have to look presentable all the time. Not only on Sabbath, mm -hmm. but all the time. Yeah. And then yes, I, asked, I bought clothes, you know, just to be able to go to Pure Light. And then I made my way to Pure Light. I didn't encounter any problem after that. Mm -hmm. I was able to get to this beautiful, amazing place. Well, we thank God for, for that. You know what? Uh, when usually people apply to come to Pure Light Missions, you know, the time they apply until arrival, there's a lot of challenges that many people face. And some actually don't make it because some challenges are actually great. And, you know, it just takes them out. But 
we always have this assurance that God always preserves us from these troubles. And from what you're telling me, God really kept you th through all these challenges that you are facing until you came here. And you mentioned that it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, were your expectations met when you came to Pure Light Missions? How is it going for you thus far? Expectations, okay. So when you, learn, when you hear that you're going to a college in your mind and uh, in your mind you already have a picture of a place you're going to like you already created a picture of where you, you're going and everything so when i got here i'm like uh, okay right okay what you thought. Mm -mm. and then i look at the sign and i'm like uh -uh, why are we even in a very far away place like this from town but anyway as soon as the classes started, mm -hmm. not the classes, let me just say, the first day we had chapel mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. the way we sang, you mm -hmm. know, for me, music is one of the best things. So the, the way we sang here, was, I was like, yeah, no, I don't care about anything else. The music <laughs> is fine. It's just fine for me. And then classes started, conversion in righteousness by faith, how man was created, the purpose of man, that really, really, you know, touched me and everything. So I was like, that's when I started appreciating appreciating being here, eating vegan meals, mm -hmm. you know, every day, eating, you know, proper meals every day. I'm like, you know, this place is really, 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 really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Noah, for sharing your experience. Um, someone is watching out there mm -hmm. and they probably feel like they can relate with your story. They are where you came from. What would be your word of encouragement to that person? Word of encouragement to them. Well, what I can say is that um, maybe you're already into the situation, you're already deep into the situation, and you feel like getting out of it is just so impossible. Well, here I am. I'm a living testimony. You can just listen to my testimony. And apart from that, you can also pray to God. God will help you. God will help you to be able to realize that you really need Him in your life. And also, don't be ashamed don't be ashamed to correct yourself. Don't be ashamed to go back to Christ. Don't care about your surroundings as of what people will think about you now that you're moving from being a great singer who had pride in everything and back to Christ. So that's what I encourage you to do. Go back to Christ. Well, there you have it, friends. Go back to Christ. Christ will never leave you, nor forsake you. And Christ is waiting for you with open arms. He's never going to leave you if you're seeking for him, truly. Be blessed, and thank you so much for joining us in this testimony. Hope to see you next time.